to pay for the product or to pay for the service. It, it's easy for, for the student to pay or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why not? So that's Masai School and uh, Pratik, the founder CEO, and Rupul, uh, the CTO, and me, uh, the co-founder, senior vice president, we came together and we said, let's bring in a transformation in education. So uh, thanks uh, once again, uh, Insight, uh, for bringing me in. I, I, I come with over 25 years of experience in the corporate world. I worked in uh, India and Middle East extensively in sales. Uh, uh, then I moved on into learning and development uh, in my previous stint, and I always fascinated with edutech as a as a as a as a, as a, as a division. So, uh, what I run the I, I personally take care of the soft skills curriculum at Masai School. So let's begin. Uh, Let's begin this journey. This whole uh, initiative is all about soft skills for software developer. Uh, an interesting topic, and I welcome you all for the next 30 minutes or so to be, 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 to be with me in this journey. We'll learn together uh, what is this all about. So let's start. Uh, imagine a situation like this, uh, a scenario like this. Uh, CTO, CTO of a large product-based company, uh, let's call him, his name is Ajay, and he calls his recruiting manager Shankar. And he says, hey Shankar, uh, I'm looking for a full stack web developer. Uh, make sure that he's a good team player. Uh, he's got a collaborative mindset. He's excellent in communication and also time management. Can you please uh, reach out and make sure that the candidate has these uh, uh, qualities in him? Shankar takes a long pause and says, uh, Boss, uh, what about the tech stack? Ah, oh, yeah, I told you, full stack developer. But make sure that he's a good communicator, he's a team player, and the time management is good in him. Now, you must be wondering, uh, what is it that so much of emphasis is given on these uh, qualities, and whereas it was a passing remark as far as uh, the tech stack is concerned. And this requirement is becoming more and more uh, common in today's uh, uh, even tech dominated uh, roles like full stack. So what is this that we are going to discuss today uh, is on the corporate expectations. So before we started Masai School, uh, we went around and met the CTOs and the CEOs and the CXOs of the company. And we asked them very clearly a question. Uh, what, what do you mean by a competent programmer? What, do, what, what is it that you look for in a competent programmer? Obviously, many of them said that they look for someone who has got hard skills, which is the coding skills. But surprisingly, what came was is uh, it is not just that hard coding skills that we are looking for. We are also looking for uh, 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 people, applicants who also have soft skills. That was very interesting. They didn't just stop there. They also said that uh, we want uh, uh, developers who are also having a programmer mindset. So it was not just the hard skill or the coding skill that they looked for. They also looked for soft skills and programmer mindset. So when we started this Maasai school, which is a 21st century coding school, we decided that we will invest in our students uh, to develop their soft skills and the programmer mindset. So I was roped in uh, by Pratik, the founder CEO at Maasai school, uh, say that we need to build a curriculum where in which uh, every day that we invest in our students to build their soft skills and programmer mindset. So I want to welcome you to this discussion today. What is this soft skill is all about? And we are going to demystify you. I want to give you a framework and so that you all understand and begin your journey to build this core skills called soft skills that will help you not only in your professional life, but also in your personal life. So what we did was we branded this entire initiative and we called it a skillathon, just like marathon, which is a long distance running. Uh, soft skills, we named it a skillathon because you will see that uh, maybe in a one week time you can learn a CSS uh, as a module, but it would take a couple of quarters or even a year to be reasonably good in communication skill, right? So we named it as a skillathon. So let's start uh, this the entire aspect by understanding this word skills. Now, all of us, we know that uh, we are employed for our skills. The dictionary meaning of skill is an ability to carry out a specific job in a nice way. Uh, 
there are two different kinds of skills. One is the motor skill, another one is a cognitive skill. Motor skill is something that we use our muscle memory to do it. Uh, for example, painting, you know, somebody wants to paint this wall. It is largely a motor skill. Yeah, some amount of cognitive skill is required, uh, but it is largely a motor skill. Whereas a cognitive skill is a much more uh, challenging in nature that requires that application of your mind in a big way. Now, skill is an ability to carry out a specific job with using limited resources. So broadly, the skills can be classified or in any job into two ways. One is a hard skill, the other one is a soft skill. Now, for a long period of time, uh, the, most of the recruiters, most of the companies focused only on hard skills. And they said soft skills is only for leaders, only for managers who have a large team. But today, if you see that in any job, uh, they look for both the hard skills and soft skills. So let me just spend some time in explaining to you what is this hard skill is all about. Hard skill are specific knowledge or abilities to perform a specific task or an activity. For example, let's take some roles like he's an executive assistant to a CEO or a dentist or a web developer. Let's take these three roles and let us look at what are the hard skills that are required. Let's say there is a person who is an executive assistant to the CEO, a kind of a secretarial role, but the very fact that he or she is an executive assistant, what could be some of the hard skill? Uh, I would invite you to use the chat box today. We are a very small team, uh, so I would invite you to use the chat box if you're comfortable. Uh, I can, uh, you can use the chat box and uh, you can be free to type. We can make it very interactive also so that you can also raise some of the questions as we keep going and I will try to answer. Let's say that he's an executive assistant to a CEO. Uh, what could be some of the hard skill, he or she? Can I say that one of the important job uh, is to uh, write some letters, uh, type some memos. So one thing that he or she must be good is in typing, right? Typing is a key skill that is required uh, as a hard skill. Uh, listening. Listening is, I'll come to a moment in a moment, Rahul. Uh, listening is uh, more of a soft skill. Uh, hard skill, what is it that you see? Shorthand, maybe, absolutely, Ramakrishna. Shorthand could be there, but you know, it is dwindling. Uh, not many people are in learning into shorthand. Just visualize as an executive assistant uh, to a CEO of a company. Can I say a uh, hard skill of understanding Microsoft Office? must be good in PowerPoint, must be good in uh, doing some Word documentation, uh, maybe good in sending out Outlook emails. Now, coding, coding, uh, well, as an executive assistant uh, to a CEO may not be required, but definitely hard skills like uh, 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 typing out a memo, uh, fixing up some telephone appointments, all these are important things. Now, let us look at what are the soft skill aspects of an executive assistant. Data management, yes, very much. What could be the soft skills part of it? He or she, as Rahul said, uh, must be good in listening. Listening, very important. Must be a very good team player. Absolutely, Ashaswini. Communication skills should be good because she, he or she will be interacting with different departments across the hierarchies of the organization. So it is very important that the, he or she must be good communication skills, drafting skills, and so forth. Now let's look at a role like a dentist. Do you think a dentist would require a soft skill? How many of you are uh, uh, have gone to a dentist? Have gone to a dentist. What could be the hard skill that is required? Okay, Ram Krishna has gone to a dentist. What is the hard skill required uh, for a dentist? As a dentist, obviously, ability to use certain tools, right? Must be able to do that filling, extraction, uh, must be able to use. It's a skillful job, right? A dentist's job is a very skillful job. You will see the dentist playing around with a lot of, lot of equipment. In fact, they, many people are scared to go to a dentist because he or she, as a dentist, tries to play around with your mouth and many people are scared. In fact, they say one of the most scariest thing is after presentation skill is to go to a dentist for a dental checkup. You, you can check it out in the Google, it says so. Now, 
as a doctor would it require a doctor to have a soft skill do you think a doctor should have a soft skill ha ha very nicely said ramkrishnan ability to communicate with all ages of the patients right you could have a kid who is coming in at 2 3 years you would have a senior citizen at 60 to 70 the way you talk to a kid is much different to talk to a senior citizen absolutely is it ah rapo with the patient why would a doctor require to have a rapo rapo after all you have come there to for a treatment i do i i just uh, do the maybe you have just come for uh, uh, a scaling kind of a thing or a filling why should a doctor develop a rapo with a patient why should a doctor develop or to get future patient very well said <laughs> absolutely today if you look at the competition the dentists have uh, it is almost equivalent to any uh, other business isn't it every street has got tens and twenties of doctors no the very fact that a soft skill of a doctor could be welcoming the patient asking some few nice things like how are you doing uh, how is uh, did you wait for a long period of time uh, how is the pain where exactly you have listening nicely asking some good question right engaging in a small conversation showing some empathy to the patient so it doesn't matter friend whether you are an executive assistant uh, to the ceo or a dentist or a web developer you must have hard skills definitely but equally important is a soft skill so let us look at let us look at uh, uh, and if you see hard skills are largely uh, defined uh defined evaluated and measured right uh, they are they are defined evaluated and measured you can very clearly say uh, the typing speed uh, 60 words per minute accuracy 80% uh, microsoft office uh, i am pretty good in powerpoint excel and word i can define it evaluate it and measure it so for a moment let's park the hard skill and let's go to the core topic today which is the soft skill now what is a soft skill now the word soft skill was relatively newly coined in the 1970 by the american military uh, american military they coined this word called soft skill they said that everyone in the army will go through a soft skills uh, training because soft skills as i told you for a long period of time was considered as a leadership skill only the leaders need to be taken care uh, rest of them they were as good as hard skills are good they are good enough so it was it was uh, the american military which coined this word soft skill and then it came to uh, some key customer facing roles like sales customer service very promptly and then it came to other jobs and now if you look at it even hard core technical jobs people are looking whether they have soft skills can somebody tell me what is a soft skill here can you make an attempt what is a soft skill can somebody try up top of the mind it could be one word or a few couple of bullet points verbal and non verbal excellent bismoy you are bang on there verbal and non verbal one element emotional support for maybe for people okay personal skills able to deal effectively with people very nice a common thread that is coming very constantly here is people now let us look at what is soft skill what i did was uh, basis my own understanding we put together a comprehensive uh, definition kind of a thing for a soft skills so what are soft skills soft skills are a combination of deployable individual skill set tool set and mindset that enable us to navigate in an environment work well with people perform on a job and achieve our goals with complementing hard skills look at it beautifully that we have put together first of all it is a deployable individual skill set it is not just a skill set there is a tool set and a mindset what do we do when we have these three set it enable us to navigate it is like driving in bangalore or delhi or mumbai it is not a freeway even maybe shanghai and we have some friends from china also here maybe in shanghai it is not a freeway right it is all about navigating this crowded spaces work well with people as what uh, ramakrishnan said here perform on the job and achieve our goals 
the complementing hard skills. So soft skills can only work if you have complementing hard skills. We will look more about it as we go forward. We will constantly use the skill set, tool set, and mindset. So if you're familiar with this, this is a Venn diagram. So soft skills are a combination of skill set, tool set, and mindset. Give me a moment. Yeah. Can I have a quick confirmation that you're able to hear me? I plug we know for a better, uh, uh, better clarity. Can you just give me a quick? Yes, it is clear. Thank you so much. So if you look at here, what does the skill set consist of? They could consist many, many, many things. But what I have done is I have distilled it to few main aspects that of skill set. The first combination of skill set is business communication problem solving, uh, interpersonal skill, uh, teamwork and collaboration, and presentation skills. Now, these are a set of skill sets that you would be required, that you will be getting. It is not just a skill set, you would also have tool set. For example, to make this effective, we may be, must be good in our emailing skills, ability to use email. For a, for a coder, I must be good at using the GitHub. Plus, I must be good at you, uh, using the Calendly, Trello, and Zoom. These are all the tool set that we can use effectively. What about social media platform like LinkedIn, Twitter, Medium, HackerRank? What about time management skills? What about critical thinking tools and creative thinking tools? How about developing our portfolio and resume? So it is not just the skill set, but it is also the tool set. I may have a skill set and tool set, but the question to ask is, what kind of a mindset I have. Do I have a programmer mindset, if you are a programmer? And of course, marathon mindset and different habits of highly effective student and achievement orientation. So we at Masai School, what we do is we develop the entire gamut of soft skills around these three circles, the skill set, the tool set, and the mindset. Now, you may ask me a question, Yogesh, is it, which is more important? Now, I don't know, but we have, Basis my own understanding, watching many people around, uh, both at uh, individual level, at organization level. Uh, it, this is what I feel it is largely true. Work on them, it will take care of your life and career. If you talk about formula, it is skill set plus tool set into mindset. That means I may have good amount of skill set and tool set, but if I don't have the requisite mindset, uh, then it would not be there. So Binoy is asking, what is a growth mindset? Binoy, uh, lack of time, otherwise I would have explained to you. This was a word coined by Carol Dweck, who did substantial amount of study, which says that there are two kinds of mindset, fixed mindset and growth mindset. It, to give you a simple analogy, when I give you a, a glass with half milk, do you see it as half empty or half full? Now that is a growth mindset people would see half full. And fixed mindset people would see half empty. Now, typically people with fixed mindset, they always look at the fault in others. Rarely they appreciate what the others are doing. But people with growth mindset, first they appreciate others. Then they say that these are the areas for improvement. Now, typically we have seen that people, if they don't have the requisite mindset, no amount of skill set and tool set, they don't justify uh, the results, what they achieved. So it is very important. I would recommend you a book by Carol Dweck called Growth Mindset or Mindset she has written there. Okay, now let's get on to the topic. I think I have given a lot of time on, on uh, introducing it to you. Now the question is why soft skills are required. The study by Harvard University and by Stanford Research says very clearly 85% uh, of your success comes from soft skills and only 15% comes from hard skills. And it is universally true. This research was done long back, but it is even more true in today's context. And world economic research continuously release certain skills that are required to perform in current industry. In the 2022 outlook, if you require, uh, there are close to 10 soft skills that an individual must have if he has to perform very well. All these data are available in World Economic Forum. Now, Many of you, if you are developers here, you may ask me this question, leave me alone. I just want to write code. A doctor might say, leave me alone. I just want to treat patient. 
uh, or an executive assistant may say, hey, I just want to send some mails and maintain some data. Leave me alone. Why should I learn about soft skills? Now, let me address you why you need to know the soft skills. Uh, are you are familiar with this word called KRA? Any one of you are familiar with this word called KRA? If you're working, you will be very, very commonly used word KRA. KRA stands for key result area. As you all know that, absolutely Ramakrishnan, key result area. As you all know that whenever we work in an organization, we need to produce results, right? Whether you are an executive assistant or a coder or a dentist or, or, or a trainer like me, we need to produce certain results. Now, key result area execution, both at an individual level and organization level is mission critical. Because if individuals don't deliver the results, the organization will not do that. Now, when the study was done that why the many of the developers don't achieve that KRA, one thing that came out very strongly is they're not good in their problem solving skills. He is good in his hard skills. Maybe he is a React developer. He's a Python developer, but he's not good in his problem solving. He's not good in interpersonal. He's not able to work in teams. And you know that even a job like coding, you need to work, you need to work in teams and he's not good in communication. It could be combination of them or any one of them. Now, what is the soft skill that I need to learn if I have to good, be good in problem solving? I must be good in creative thinking and critical thinking. What is it that I have to be good in interpersonal skill? I must know how to collaborate and work in a team. When it comes to communication skill, as Rahul said, I must be able to listen well. I must be able to ask some good question. I must be able to, and as what Ramakrishnan said, nonverbal communication. Now, many a times you know that seeing an individual, whether he's interested in doing the work or not, just by looking at nonverbal communication, right? So this KRA is most stemmed from any one of this problem. Again, some of you might have a doubt. Leave me alone. Just I want to write code. Now, I want to tell you there are three C's that when you pick up your soft skills, there are three C's. First and foremost, you become more confident. You become confident in problem solving. You become confident in dealing with people. You become confident in going after your KRAs. So the first C that gives you when you're good in soft skills is your confident. Confident to solve problems, confident to deal with people, confident to, uh, to achieve your result. Now that is the first C. What could be the second C? The second C is you become more comfortable, right? The very fact that you have communication skills, collaboration skills, team working skills, critical thinking and creative thinking, you become comfortable. When you're confident and when you're comfort, you start controlling. Now, many a times when you walk in for interview, people are nervous because they lack confidence and comfort. Most of them, they struggle because they lack soft skills. Now, what happens in an interview is the first 15, 20 minutes is very difficult, right? And because you lack soft skills, you lack confidence. Because you lack soft skills, you're not comfortable. Because you lack soft skills, you're not controlling the entire conversation. So friends, the very fact that you build your soft skills, you get the three C's. That is, you become confident, you become comfortable, and you, become, you can start controlling. Still, some people might have doubt. Leave me alone. I just want to write code. Leave me alone. I just want to treat patient. Leave me alone. I just want to uh, be an executive assistant. One last thing I want to tell you. There are studies have done so many times and it has said that two thirds of the jobs will become soft skill incentive. And there is a huge demand for soft skills and employers are finding it very difficult to fill with people with soft skills. Intensity. In Intensive jobs, it will become more than two and a half times. And I can keep giving data after data after data points. And this is done by Deloitte. So friends, it's not me who's saying that soft skills are important. The industry is saying, the research is saying, data points are showing. So I don't want you to have any iota of doubt in your mind. I am good in my hard skill. I will ignore the soft skill. I want to give you some more elements into it. So soft skills, summary of what we have said so far, are the skills for the future success. They drive business outcome. Individual performance is based on soft skill. And there is a huge soft skill gap in the country, in the world. So if you develop that soft skill, you will get hired fast. You will get faster promotion. Right? But having said that, there are certain myths. 
You know, there are certain myths when it comes to soft skill. What is the first myth is soft skills are something amorphous. What do you mean by amorphous? Formless, shapeless, vague, unstructured, unquantifiable, unteachable. People say that either an individual has a soft skill or he doesn't. But the fact is soft skills are structured, quantifiable and learnable. That is what we are attempting at Maasai School. And we have seen that batch after batch, people who go through the soft skills program, uh, they come out much stronger, much confident, more control in the entire discussion is all about it. I'm sure you all identify these uh, champions, whether it is Roger Federer, Virat Kohli, uh, Lionel Messi, Rahul Dravid, one of my favorite, Magic Johnson or Akshay Kumar. What do you think one thing which is common with all of them? While I'm saying that soft skills is structured, quantified, and learnable, but one thing that is very important is it requires deliberate practice. What happens is, friends, people watch uh, uh, some, read some book, or people watch some YouTube videos, and they think they know soft skills. No, it requires immense amount of deliberate practice. Reading a book on time management does not make you good in time management. It is most important is translating the learnings in time management into a day-to-day -day, uh, practice and making it sharper and sharper and making it a part of your personality is what is important, right? So deliberate practice is key. So what is deliberate practice as what Malcolm Gladwell said? Success has to do with deliberate practice. Practice must be focused, determined and an environment where there is a feedback. And as Bruce Lee said it very beautifully, knowing is not enough, we must apply. Willing is not enough, we must do. So only when you deliberately practice whatever that you learn, soft skills can get internalized. For example, we say that one thing in soft skill is uh, nonverbal communication. One thing that we say in nonverbal communication is smile. But do you know that most people find it very difficult to smile, right? They find it very difficult. In fact, as per uh, the first thing the human beings learn uh, after the child is born is to smile. Right. That, but many of us find it very difficult to smile. Smile is one of the soft skills that is very important. It says that it takes only 12 muscles to smile and 72 muscles to frown. But whereas people find it more easier to frown than to smile. Right. OK, so let's move forward. Uh, some more myths and prejudices that we must overcome less important than hard skills. People say that, no, no, no. Let me focus on my hard skill. Let me pick up things like Python, Java, uh, let me pick up uh, front-end engineering, back-end engineering. Don't get me wrong, they are important. But equally important is soft skills. And many of you still feel that it is for managers and leaders. No, it is required at every level. And if you grow up the le level, it becomes more and more important. And some people think soft skills is being fake. Tell me something, by smiling, is it a fake? The smile makes, what does you convey? When you smile at someone, it says that you are approachable, right? It all says that I'm approachable. You can talk to me. That's all it says. It is not being fake. When you say thank you to someone, is it being fake? It is all about your reciprocating, saying that uh, you have done something good to me and I want to thank you. So things like smile and thank you, people find it very difficult to do it in real life. They think it is sugar coating and being fake. No, it is not. Okay. So manipulating and playing politics. No, being good in soft skills, not about it. Sign of weakness, no way about it. In fact, from today onwards, people should stop calling them soft skills. Stop calling them soft skills. In fact, we at Maasai call them as catalytic skills. Anybody from chemistry here? Uh, what does a catalyst do? Anybody? Can tell me what is what does a catalyst do? In any chemical reaction, what do a catalyst do? It's speed enough, absolutely, Bala. So similarly, similarly, if you have a soft skill, it speeds up your success. In fact, catalytic skill is for the developer. It boosts reaction, as what Eshaswini says. It, it increases the post of reaction. So soft skills are actually catalytic skill. It's a fundamental human skill that help us to acquire all other skills and engage more effectively in the world. In fact, I have this million dollar question. There are two things that should have been thought right from 
maybe from primary or a high school level. One is a thinking skill. The other one is a soft skill. Right, right from the time that we are born, the brain thinks. Tell me somebody, has anyone taught you how to think? Absolutely, Albert, you're right. Many engineers don't make it uh, because they lack soft skills. Yes, it's true. It's true. They find it very difficult to convey their thoughts, views and opinion. They're not able to walk through the code and they're not able to work in the team and they lack. Even if they make into the job, they're not given good positions. Can somebody tell me, uh, anybody has taught you thinking as a skill either in school or colleges? No. Why? Why? That's a big question. Actually, thinking can be taught as a skill, just like physics, chemistry, mathematics, geography, history, biology. Why can't thinking can be included as a subject? It can be connected to the marks. Forget about marks. It can be taught as a as a subject to help it. Thinking as a subject should be introduced right from schools and colleges. So is also soft skills. They must introduce these two are life skills. As long as we live, we will use thinking and soft skills right through that. And if somebody can make a life better with thinking and soft skills, why not about it? Okay, so JavaScript is a technical skill. The catalyst skill of focus and persistent uh, will help you to acquire the skill faster. Absolutely. Good. So what do we have to do if somebody has to acquire a soft skill? You must have, first of all, a belief that I must acquire a soft skill. Otherwise, it doesn't matter how many books you read. It doesn't matter how many sessions that you and, uh, attend. And after that, you will say, yeah, it was good, but it is not for me. You must start observing others carefully. What is it that makes them different? And pick it up. Observation is a very important skill if you want to pick up a soft skill. Always keep reflecting ways to improve. And one thing that is good about soft skill is you can never be perfect. You can never be perfect. That is why at Maasai School, we use a scale of 1 to 9 and not 0 to 10. Uh, many people use a scale 0 to 10 where 10 is perfect. We only use 1 to 9. There is nobody perfect in communication skill. There is nobody perfect in time management. There is always a scope to improve. Right. Okay. So, and then it requires deliberate practice. I have talked about it. Deliberate practice is very important and keep implementing these changes consciously. One important element, if you want to pick up soft skill is curious, you must be curious. As a child, we are very curious, but unfortunately, uh, as we keep growing, we become less curious. I have seen this in my elder son. You know, I have two boys at home. My elder son Rahul was very curious when he was very angry is to keep asking this question, why, why, why? But today he is a teenager, hardly he asks why. You know, he used to ask so many questions to his mother, why is this, why is this, why is this? And the mother used to get annoyed and says, Rahul, why, why do you ask so many times why? But today he doesn't ask because that is a normal progression. Either you can blame the society, blame the family, blame the school. We don't encourage students who ask why. So you must stay curious if you want to improve your soft skill. And one thing that must be your mantra, as they say in India, mantra. The mantra is, you must be better and be better every day. Uh, there's a beautiful book uh, written by uh, uh, James Clear. Uh, and uh, I recommend this book to all of you. It's called the Atomic Habits, where he talks about the power of tiny habits. And he talks about 1% better every day. If I can be just 1% better every day, the mathematically, the formula is like this, I'll be 37.8 times better at the end of one year. And if I get 1% worse every day, and 0 0.03 is what I will be at the end of one year. So don't look at having a mega jump, a major jump uh, in soft skills every day. Look for the tiny improvement. Can I sit better today? Can I sit erect? Can I walk a bit briskly? Can I say thank you to the people? Can I smile? Uh, can I use uh, uh, some uh, nonverbal gestures? Uh, can I work in team? Can I work in collaboration? Uh, book, name, uh, book name is uh, Atomic Habits. Saranan, Atomic Habits by James Clear. I'll just type the, in the chat box. And of course, I will have the Q&A session in the end where you can ask me anything that you want for that. Let me, I'm just falling behind the time. Let me slightly pace up. 
So this is the book. Here it is, The Atomic Habits, Tiny Changes, Remarkable Results. I recommend everyone to read that. So your goal should be to always be better than I was yesterday. And I keep telling my uh, younger son who is interested in, uh, you know, you want to become a pastry chef. I, I, all I tell him is, can I make this cake better uh, this time than previous time? That, is, that should be your goal and it is possible. So the goal is always be better. When Rahul Dravid is to go and uh, play, he is to say that, can I play this ball of uh, this particular bowler much better? When Magic Johnson goes and puts that ball in the basket, his goal is, can I put this even better than the last time? Can I put that perfect B? So if you're all looking for answers about your success, I will tell you, increase your soft skills and this will help you. You know, we did a lot of uh, study with some people who are struggling in their careers in their uh, mid thirties or late forties. Uh, I, we asked them uh, what happened and the hard truth about soft skills uh, is workplace lessons. Smart people say that wish I had learned it earlier. Wish I had learned presentation skill. I could have made a better presentation and I could have got a better opportunity in my career progression. I wish I had better collaborative skill. I wish I was able to use the tool sets like LinkedIn, Twitter better. I could have made more contacts, uh, more opportunities in life. So friends, the hard truth about soft skill is it all they say that I wish I learned better earlier. So start learning as soon as possible. Now, some of you might have question how to develop soft skills. There are five things you must do. First and foremost, prioritize which soft skills that you want to develop. Do you want to focus on your communication skill, presentation skill? Do you want to build your mindset first? Or do you want to work on tools? Maybe one or two things that you focus on it. Look out for resources. Today, there is so much of resources available, either in the way of books or in the way of Coursera, Udemy, edX. There are so many platforms available. You see what is the best thing that you can do. Attend some podcasts, attend YouTube, watch some TED Talks, and then dedicate time and learn, time to learn and internalize. For example, let's say that you want to develop time management as a soft skill. First, go and explore which are the time management courses that you can do, watch some videos, and then start internalizing them and practicing them. Deliberate practice is key. Only then it becomes a habit. And once it becomes a habit, it will become a part of you. So the most important element of a soft skill is you must make it a deliberate practice and internalize it and make it as a habit and start on another soft skill. You keep doing this over a period of time, you will have a big repository of soft skills in you. Friends, a couple of closing remarks that I want to say, tell you. Soft skills predict your success in life. Guaranteed. And I have seen that. Unless otherwise your hard skill is in that extent, nobody else can give in the market, then it doesn't matter, right? Now, if you are an R&D scientist where only you can solve certain puzzles or something that you are unique about it, then it really doesn't matter. If your reputation precedes you, even then it requires. But if you are a normal person like you and me, soft skills predicts your success in life. And investment, today what you make, it will last for years to come because they are life skills. You will use all those skills that I've told in the skill set, tool set, and mindset as a life skill. So it's time to invest now. So if you are a computer programmer skill, a perfect balance between hard skills and soft skills is what the companies are looking for. So what we do at Masai School is we invest one hour every day for five days a week for 20 weeks for 100 hours of soft skills. And mind you friends, it is a journey. You must enjoy the journey and there is no exact destination when it comes to soft skills because every day you can keep improving. Every day you can improve. So I strongly urge all of you to focus on these three circles in life. The skill set, the tool set and the mindset to become a, a competent developer when it comes to soft skills as that. So I want to end this uh, session uh, with a story of the four minute a mile. Have you heard about this, a four minute a mile by Roger Bannister? If not, I will tell you. Okay, for a long, long period of time, I'm talking about centuries, man wanted to break one record and that record was to run a mile, which is 1,600 meters in less than four minutes. Run a mile, uh, run the four minute mile, right? Run a mile in less than four minutes. It was not possible to break that record. Uh, 
the Greeks, I'm talking about 2000 years ago, they gave tigers milk, thinking that uh, by they'll become stronger and break that record. The Romans let loose lion, thinking that uh, the runners will run faster, fearing for life. They could not break the record. Early 20th century, the doctors said the human bones are not strong enough. They cannot break this record. But in the, in the 1976, this guy whom you're seeing on the screen, Roger Bannister, broke that record. And, and the reporter went to him and he said, Roger, for centuries, people said it will not happen. How did you do it? And all he said was, distance is nothing. It is the first step that is difficult. So don't get overwhelmed. Are uh, what is this Yogesh is talking about? Uh, three circles, skill set, tool set, mindset, and each one of them he has given a big list. How am I able to do that? Distance is nothing. It is the first step that is difficult. Please take that first step and do it now because life rewards action. It, life rewards action. You have seen that intention don't produce result. It is the action that produces result, right? So I invite you, all of you, uh, to develop this and uh, make it as an action to build your soft skills. In case if you need any details, you can always write to soft skills at masaischool.com or admissions at masaischool.com or yogesh at masaischool.com. I will definitely share these details to you. So I want to thank Insight for this opportunity to share this, uh, why it is soft skills is important. I thought it is largely a developer a, a community would come, but it doesn't matter whether you're a developer or soft skills is a universal skill. Everybody needs it. So thank you so much. And I open the chat box uh, for question and answer. If you have any specific question, I would be keen to answer. And uh, over to Albert. Yeah. So if any of you have any questions, please ask. Either uh, you can chat or you can unmute and speak or whatever way you would like to do that. Uh, I welcome you to do this. Uh, yeah, thanks, hi, so, uh, uh, thanks for the feedback. Yeah, hi, it's a great session. So how can we quantify this uh, soft skills? Like uh, how can we actually uh, get the confidence on, okay, I have achieved this soft skill? Okay. As I told you, it is a journey and you can, uh, and you need to progress uh, in this journey and uh, you can never say that I, I have done and it is always related to the job that you are doing. For example, uh, if you are going to uh, interact heavily with people, uh, it also it, it matters a lot. So don't worry about quantification at this moment. Uh, you ask these three questions, those three C's. Am I confident? Am I comfortable? Am I in control? And you would be the right person to judge yourself. So uh, obviously, if I'm going to compare uh, with, uh, let's say, Brain Tracy, I don't know whether you know about Brain Tracy. Brain Tracy is 74 years old. He's one of the finest uh, self-help uh, uh, trainer in this world. Even at 74, he runs session. And uh, if you want to book him, you, he's booked for the next one year. So as long you feel your confident, your comfort and control, these three C's are there, you're progressing. You're progressing. Uh, you're, you're confident that you can manage your time well, your comfort in handling deadlines, and you have control over the activities. That means you're getting better in time management. Just an example. Or let's say that you want to make a presentation to an audience. Uh, I get an opportunity. I'm confident that I can put together a design. Uh, I'm comfortable. Uh, to stand there and deliver that session. And I'm able to control the entire session, handle question and answers very effectively. That means you are there. Uh, I think that is where you need to start with. And then you will see more and more you start observing people and you will see that, hey, this is something that I need to, you, you will start uh, understanding yourself what areas you need to work on. Right. That's the beauty about soft skill. And today, if you start attending TED Talks, if you start attending uh, some of the YouTube uh, lessons that is available uh, on great speakers, you will see that, uh, oh, this is something that I would like to use. How do I use my voice, voice modulation? How do I use pause effectively? How do I walk briskly? There's a beautiful book uh, on postures. Now, the very fact that if you sit like this, what does it mean? What does it mean you keep moving your hair? 
What does it mean that you keep doing this? What does it mean that if you're in an interview and you keep biting your lips? All these are the things that you will start observing very closely, right? What does it mean crossing your legs uh, in the interview? I'm just saying interview or any formal meeting. So the most important is you must get curious that I, and you must believe that soft skills are important for me to build my professional and, uh, and uh, personal life. Any other question, please? Oh, very nice. Uh, uh, if you want to connect some students to me, uh, I'm on LinkedIn and Twitter. Uh, they can do that. That is one thing. But if any one of them want to do, uh, uh, want to become a developer, web developer, we have courses running. And as you know, we are an outcome driven school. We don't charge anything upfront. They only pay when they get a job of five lakhs and above. So they can apply to masaischool.com. And if they get qualified, and if you want to have a web developer as a course and soft skills come along with this. Sure, I will send you, you can find me on my LinkedIn. It is Yogesh, uh, Yogesh Bhatt is my LinkedIn profile. You can go and uh, see, connect me. I'll definitely accept. Just, just mention that uh, you attended Insight session and I will accept it. And I keep posting a lot many things on soft skills. I'm also on Twitter handle, Yogesh Bhatt 17. You can also follow me on Twitter. Uh, I keep posting it, uh, something related to soft skills, life skills, uh, and I'm always there to help them. And if any of them want a personal session from me, I, I'm more than willing to help them. They can always reach out to me. Of course, on a mutually convenient time, uh, I can always have a, uh, have a talk with them. We as a school are very keen to help people. Oh, absolutely. In fact, there is a very nice quote saying that uh, 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 I'm scared about people uh, achieving their targets without aiming high. Uh, in fact, you must aim for high. Uh, I don't know whether uh, you have, you know, the smart goals. Smart goals is nothing but specific, measurable, aligned to your vision, realistic, and Time bomb. I'll give you an example. Let's say that you are a runner and you want to, you are a hundred meters runner and currently you're clocking 10 minutes, uh, sorry, uh, 10, 11 seconds, 11 seconds. I'm just giving you an example, 11 seconds. You know, the fastest, uh, 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 star, fastest man is Hussein Bolt is around 9.8 seconds. Please correct me if I'm wrong. So you are away from Hussein Bolt between you and you is 1.2 seconds. Now, here is a question is being asked, should I set my goal very high? Yeah, you can set 11 seconds to maybe 10.5 seconds that I will achieve uh, within the next one year. But if you want to say 9.5, which is unlikely, which is unlikely, right? Which is unlikely to happen. So uh, you, you, you must uh, be a little more realistic, but have some stretched goals don't keep easy goals of 10.9 seconds and then say that i am done i have achieved my goal that's not the way to do it oh yes that's an interesting uh, topic bala uh, on success uh, depends on whether you are giving up in fact one of the mindsets that we teach in our in, in masai school is grit uh, grit is something that everyone should have in fact grit should be taught at school level itself. Grit is nothing but uh, persistence uh, with resilience along with passion. It's a beautiful formula called grit, persistence, resilience, and uh, passion. People who are gritty, uh, they achieve in spite of odds. If you see entrepreneurs are generally very gritty people. Uh, they don't uh, uh, run away because of small failures. Failures are part of entrepreneurship. Uh, successful entrepreneurs are the ones who are who have a lot of grit in them and grit has to be taught L grit is also learnable you learn grit uh, and it should be taught at school level and somehow we feel that failure is bad actually fail what what do you, what is fail i had a nice acronym for fail fail is first attempt in learning it's perfectly fine encourage your child to fail in anything that they attempt. That doesn't mean that they have to fail in their grades. I'm talking about failing in something, attempting new. 
it's okay if, if the child wants to draw something and it becomes a disaster it's okay if the child wants to cook something and it gets burnt out it's okay right so first attempt in learning is fail according to us so it's perfectly fine fine to fail but the question is do they come back and try again that is most important if you give up at a very engaged then you keep giving up and then you don't attempt you know that uh, uh, whether it is albert einstein or steve jobs for that matter today you know about steve jobs but you don't know how many at, uh, failure attempts he has had so all of us uh, all 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 successful people have a lot of failures behind them but what we see is only their success okay any any further uh, questions around great so albert uh fantastic thank you albert and thank you insight for inviting me and uh, uh sorry to interrupt uh, so yes. can you just uh, let us know the books which you suggested other than uh, the habits one sure uh, what i will do is uh, i will give you a list that you can refer to if you want you can read book on grit by uh angela deckworth she has written a book on grit you must do that sure. uh, atomic habits i have already shared by atomic habits you can do that by james clear and of course all of you should start with uh, this book how to win friends influence people by dale carnegie all of you should read this book in fact this was one book that opened up for me i read this in my college uh, that helped me to understand how do i connect with people uh, this book is written some 60 70 years back it is absolutely true even today for those people who feel very introvert not comfortable in talking to people uh, not very uh, uh, confident you must read this first book is how to win friends and influence people by dale carnegie you must read this book okay so yeah we from insights would like to thank our speaker for the great session like i hope all the attendees learn a lot so thank you sir for coming to insights and delivering the webinar thank you albert and thank you all all the participant on a saturday evening uh, you have attended this session thank you so much bye bye